This is John Paul Rai. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan, and today I want to go over this tweet by Marilyn Manson, Uncancelled, and it's about Pink. Now, I've heard the name, of course, but I didn't know how big she was. So it turns out Pink's got 31 million followers on Twitter and almost 9 million on Instagram. So she's a pretty big name, and when she says something and tweets it out, there are going to be a lot of people who are paying attention, hearing it, and learning something, hopefully, in this case. So she tweeted out about Rolling Stone, and she had some really, really bad things to say. Now, I can only assume that Malin Manson, uncancelled, tweeted this out because this is indirectly defending Malin Manson. As you guys know, Rolling Stone has been heavily on Evan Rachel Wood's side, and traditionally, like Pink will get into a little bit, they've been neutral, on the musician's side, until something came out in a court of law, that is. I mean, these are still just allegations against Manson, so why should they actually take a side, and he's got some of his own defenses that they don't even get into? Anyway, let's see what Pink said. So this is about Rolling Stone, and she says, You guys have been irrelevant since 1990. This is the magazine that used to feature people like John Lennon and Muddy Waters. Hunter S. Thompson wrote political pieces. They put Tina Turner on their cover. Then they sold out and all credibility went to shit when style over substance and revenue over authenticity went into play. In other words, you could say they kind of turned into more of a clickbaity, I support the current thing magazine and not authentic where they get musicians and their outlooks, and their point of views, and even maybe some poetic outlook on what's going on, some real thought. What they have now, well, like you see, featuring things like Evan Rachel Wood, who just accuses Marilyn Manson, without tangible, definitive evidence, and they print it. And they're interested. And they don't want to hear Marilyn's side so much. They don't want to be balanced. That's when Snooky became acceptable coverage. Give me an effing break. Do your homework. You don't have to like me or my music or anything about me. And believe me, I could give a shit. But this is the biggest sellout in effing history when it comes to a publication we all once trusted. F Rolling Stone. Or F-U-C-K-Y-O-U Rolling Stone, she could say. And let's just say this. I don't know Pink, I don't know her music, so I wouldn't say I didn't like her, because I don't know her. However, when she's got such a big following, a cumulative 40 million people, that means when she says something, she's putting her reputation out there. She's saying, hey, there's a lot of people listening, so I could risk losing some people over this, but I'm going to say it anyway, so I think that's a good thing. And when it's negative like this towards a big magazine... That's more trustable because if you're kind of punching down, it's less risk that that person who you're attacking will have a fan base that might affect you or be crossover to your fan base. So it's more risky, you know, criticizing someone big. And I've felt that way for decades, as so many of my favorite artists and peers have. This isn't just about their horrendous opinion of rating Grammy performances, it's decades of wasting trees and people's time. Well, I'm not sure exactly how much is actually printed these days and how much is digital. However, they've been around for a really, really long time. So I guess to be fair, they were pretty good for a while, like she says. So those prints and the trees, I guess, went into better use. But now, not so good. Or maybe after the 90s, like she says, I haven't followed them you know, in the 90s and the early 2000s. So I'll take her word for that. But yeah, I guess she has a point. That might be a waste of paper and trees. And E. Winters backs up what I said, is that they've told people like Colonel Kurtz they're not interested in hearing Marilyn Manson's side of the story because that doesn't quite sell as much. The truth doesn't quite sell as much as fantastic allegations and these stories about bondage and this scary guy, or whatever else. So, you know, like Pink was saying, they're more into the ad revenue these days. Dr. Soup says this is refreshing as hell. Good job, Pink, and I will agree with that and give a heart. Anyway, 
there you have it. I thought that was really a nice thing that Pink did, her honest opinion and saying something negative about somebody who's just kind of been going a little wild lately and probably deserves it. Can they be redeemed? I don't know. It's almost like, what's the point? They were classic. They were great for so many decades. But if they've fallen off, I'd say, you know what? They've had their day. They've had their chance. They've made their good points. But now if they're falling towards, you know, the Daily Mail, the Sun type territory, well, it's better to let them go. Or I should say, it's better to push something that's slipping than risk falling down with it. You guys, let me know what you think down below. Doing shout outs, special thanks, things like that. That first heard, little Manson, little Momoa, whatever comes up that's interesting. And if you don't subscribe, I guess it'll be sad, but I'll get over it. See you next time.